Using task and do catch in Swift UI can be cumbersome due to the verbosity and complexity they introduce into the code. Managing asynchronous operations and error handling with these constructs often result in code that is harder to read and maintain. The do catch blocks can become nested and convoluted, making the flow of error handling less intuitive. Additionally, the combination of task for concurrency and do catch for error management can lead to boilerplate code that detracts from the clarity and elegance typically associated with SwiftUI. But fear not, this video will demonstrate a more streamlined approach, simplifying asynchronous code and error handling in SwiftUI, enhancing readability and maintainability. Did you know that you can hire me? I build full scale applications. Go ahead and check out the link in the description. It's rebeloper.com slash hire us. Now today we are going to talk about task and do catch. So here is the actual thing that most probably you've written thousands of times. So uh, luckily we have async await and we also have throwing functionalities, throwing functions. And uh, hopefully you, uh, your project uses both of them. So uh, let's say we have uh, this uh, asynchronous throwing function. So let's have a function here, do something. And uh, it's uh, async and throwing function. And basically that's it. So maybe you are getting this from uh, your server or some a uh, SDK. Uh, you have this asynchronous throwing function and you want to use this inside your application. So uh, what do you do? Um, again, let's just assume that this do something is uh, somewhere else, you know, it's some sort of SDK. You have, uh, let's set up a button right over here. So uh, let's have a button title tap me and then you have this action so button tapped and then we have this function and I want to use this do something and if I just start typing it out do something you see it is grayed out and that's because uh, it's asynchronous so we are not in the right context and also it will ask for the throwing functionality but uh, currently it's just complaining about not being inside an asynchronous environment so what do you do you just add a task and put your do something like await do something now as you can see it's not grayed out uh, we have we have this asynchronous functionality right now. The second error that pops up is that call can throw, but it's not marked with try. So just go and add try a way to do something. But now you are not actually catching all of those errors. So you put all of this into a do catch statement. So you can catch, do catch, you can catch the error. And uh, uh, maybe you just print it out, print the errors, localized description. Of course, you should definitely uh, show this inside an alert, uh, not just print it out. I have a separate YouTube video on that. Go ahead and check out uh, the, the uh, channel and um, it should be uh, on the latest videos. Small business owners should build an iOS app for customer retention because it offers direct engagement, personalized promotions, and loyalty rewards, boosting repeat business. An app enhances customer experience with features like easy ordering and support. By having a dedicated presence on their customers' devices, small businesses can stay top of mind and foster a deeper connection with their clientele, ultimately driving long-term retention and growth. Contact me to build your app today at rebeloper.com slash hire up. So, this is how you are just handling this do something asynchronous throwing function. And to be honest, this looks really, really ugly. As you can see, you have this pyramid of doom. Also on the tribe, you want to catch. Yeah, there should be a better way of doing this. Now, there is one thing uh, when you... Uh, are not tapping on a button, but let's say when a view appears. Uh, so uh, maybe you just had this on appear. That's fine. So this button tap, of course, it's not button tap, but this asynchronous throwing function is going to be uh, executed on the appear. There's a, a task view modifier, task, which gives us an asynchronous uh, environment. So uh, all you have to worry about is the 
catching of the throwing functionality. So try, we have this do catch statement over there. And this is also um, okay-ish, but uh, surely there's a better way of uh, doing this. So this is the problem. And uh, basically it's uh, kind of convoluted API. So let me just comment all of these out and let's build our own um, extension and uh, a, a task for handling all of this. Let me just scroll a little bit down over here and uh, let's create, well, first of, all, first of all, let's create this task, you know, uh, the first, the button tab, the, what I have written right over here. It should be a, a relatively a simple. So let's create a function just like this, uh, not inside the struct, not inside the class. We just create a new function and I'm just going to call it task. And the task does have a priority. So I'm just going to add priority. We did not see it because it has some default values. Task priority, uh, it's optional. And we are going to set this to nil. Again, the default values uh, should be there. And then I also want to add on this uh, declaration of the function, the do catch part. So we are going to create an operation right over here with a catch. So I'm going to name this a do. Uh, that's the outer property. The inner property will be named operation. And we need to have some sort of a completions right over here. So uh, it will be an escaping uh, completion. So escaping, there we go. And then let me just move this a little bit up so we can read it uh, 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 really nicely. So here is my completion. Let me just write it out. Okay, that's our completion. But what we are going to get back, it's an asynchronous throwing function. So async froze right over there after the first two parentheses. Okay. And finally, I want to catch the errors. So catch, uh, again, a completion, which will complete with some sort of an error. So again, at escaping, and then here's our completion. And then let's add the error right in there. So we're just going to uh, throw it uh, back. Okay. And I know this is kind of a mouthful. It's really, really long. You will understand how now that I'm going to use all of these properties and how we are going to use it uh, outside, you know, in the do something, uh, well, on the button tap functionality with the do something function. Okay, so let's use this. We're going to create the task, you know, uh, that thing that we want to avoid writing over and over again. We set the priority, priority uh, to priority. There we go. And then here comes the operation. We set up the do catch statement, you know, exactly how we did previously. Now we are going to have this try await, and then we just uh, uh, execute the operation. That's why this operations uh, completion, yeah, it's, it, this part of the completion needs to be asynchronous throwing because with this operation uh, uses the try await right over here. And then we want to throw the error, but actually we want to use this catch right over here. So if I just type out catch and then open parentheses, we just pass along the error, but there will be a warning right over here, actually expected expression. It's not a warning, it's an error altogether. The catch word is exclusive for the do catch. So what we need to do is add these two tildes so make the catch inside the tildes and then it will know that this is it so we are talking about this catch that we added right over here okay so basically that's it now how do we uh, use it so instead of writing this task and do and try let's just uh, try this one so we have this task and now we have this one with the do catch or priority do catch. So let's just have the one with the do catch. We have two completions. So after I hit return, I hit return once more. And then we have this try await and then do something. Okay, that asynchronous throwing function. We are going to catch an error, if any. So error. Uh, 
Of course, this will not be executed Therefore, if there are no errors. Therefore, when we get this error back, we are having an error. So it's not optional. It could, but, could not be nil. We just print out the error. As you can see, it's much, much nicer than this uh, pyramid of doom that we have right over there. And uh, that's how we would do on the bottom tab. Now, um, I also talked about this task. And again, this is really, really long. Let's do a task that has the do catch statement. And uh, we are going to learn what we uh, added right over here a little bit. Let's create that extension on the view because uh, this will be a view modifier, just like the task view modifier. It's going to be a func. And again, I'm going to name this task. And I'm going to uh, add a uh, priority. Priority. Let me just copy this out so I can just uh, move faster. And this will be a task priority. And uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, when you are using a task, it's actually not an optional task priority. It's not, its default value is not nil. It's actually dot user initiated. And then we have all of the other stuff. Let me just copy this out and paste it in there. This will return some view and then those two parentheses. Okay, uh, maybe let me just move this out of the way. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, it's, it, it needs to return some sort of view. That's why uh, it's just uh, having this error right over here. So if I just add in here self, so we are returning the view, uh, that error should go away. And it did. Great. Now, uh, we are going to add a task with a priority and action. So priority, we just pass along the priority and the action. As you can see, it has to be asynchronous. Uh, we are going to add a do catch statement right over here catch and again we are just going to pass along the error so let me just move that and here we are going to say try await and in our case it's called action oh uh, yeah uh, let's just rename this operation to action because on the task view modifier it's called action that's why action there we go as you can see quite fairly the same and now instead of this task i can just go and have a task with a do catch or priority do catch of course so let's just have one with a do catch and task i'm just going to copy this out try await do something if there's an error so let's just go with an error we are going to print out the localized description as you can see it's much nicer much readable and uh, yeah we have uh, the try and await functionality used in our Swift UI project much, much easier. Now, I am using all of these in my custom work too. And if you want to hire me to build out your app or you have an app idea that you want me to build out, go ahead and check out rebeloper.com slash hire us. The link is down in the description.